Serious, attempted murder victims of Reddit. Have you ever gotten over it? How has it affected your life? My father tried to kill me when I was a kid and about 15 years later I was robbed at gunpoint twice, working as a manager of a retail store. I'm hyper vigilant and paranoid of most strangers when I'm by myself but otherwise incredibly grateful to be alive. I don't ever put myself in compromising situations and I rarely take any type of risks. I think the biggest impact it had was it motivated me to get out of the ghetto situations my family was used to and I was probably destined for. I put myself through college after that and now I'd consider myself middle class and invisible. No longer a target. If I'm in public, I can't be in the dark. If I'm in my locked car or a hotel room, I'm somewhat okay, but extremely on edge. About 16 years ago, me and a friend were out to get some junk food for a LAN party. A group of people gathered together to play multiplayer games, and we encountered a few people demanding our wallets or else they'd try something. We handed the wallets over, they decided we didn't have enough. We tried to run from them, this didn't work. They pulled out their knives and stabbed us. My friend didn't survive, I'd rather not go into the long version of events. But it took a long time for me to get over it. I moved overseas, and that helped a lot. It felt like I was leaving the whole experience behind. Holy crap. Freaking people man. Killing someone because he didn't have enough money to rob. I'm so sorry for both you and your friend. My best friend got pretty drunk one evening and decided to take out his angst on the world with me. He got very argumentative and tried to pick a fight in his living room and nothing anyone could say would calm him. After much screaming and shouting on his part he ran into the kitchen and grabbed a large kitchen knife. His girlfriend followed him back in from the kitchen and told him to put it down so he span round and threw it at her head, missing her by only a few inches. He then picked the knife back up and stood in the middle of the room with his back to me. I stood behind him, told him he needed to calm down but he just span round and lashed the knife at me as he did. At first I wasn't aware anything had actually happened, but then I could feel a trickling wet feeling on my arm and looked down to see all the bones of my forearm showing where he had pretty much cut through everything. The slash had gone right across my right forearm and then bounced over to my left where a smaller cut was but the smaller cut was right across my wrist. I was bleeding out quite badly as you can imagine and passed out shortly afterwards. Came to in the hospital with the staff telling me I was lucky to be alive and the police looking at filing charges of attempted murder. I now have a rather large scar across my right arm and a small one on the left and what really pisses me off is that little one on the left. People look at the large scar and think that it must be some kind of accident that caused that but when people see the small one it screams suicide attempt to them given where it is. I was jumped and stabbed twice, once in the head, when I was a teenager. It really affected me for a while but I got over it, for the most part, eventually. I tired really hard to make it seem like it didn't affect me, but in reality the lack of support I got from anyone made me a lot more distrustful of PPL and withdrawn. I was really angry for a long time about the whole situation. I felt like I couldn't trust anyone and was paranoid in public. I always carried a weapon after that. Years later I realized I had symptoms of PTSD. I had always thought that was only something soldiers get. On the bright side, it gave me a better perspective on my own and others mortality. I thought I was dang invincible before that. I'm sorry you didn't get the support you needed. It sounds like you have found strength to go forward. I like to think I do, but I don't think I'll ever really get over it. Something that would seem so simple like thinking wow. If that thing didn't happen I would be dead long ago is hard to get over with. What happened to me was pretty simple honestly. This happened while I was in high school. I was heading to the bus stop with a buddy, and we usually took this really shady alley that led to some equally shady stairs, that went straight to the nearest bus stop, basically the most stupid shortcut we could pick. So, this one day these stairs that led to the bus stop were, well, occupied. There was like 12 people, men and women, driking, smoking pot, and being loud. We looked at each other, my buddy shrugged, and kept going. I was incredibly scared, but I followed him. Somehow these people didn't even mind us. We were just squeezing through when, suddenly, one of the guys, stoned as heck, grabs my ass for no reason. I shove him off, and tell him to frick himself. And surely, next thing I know, this other dude I didn't even see shoved me back. I shove him off too, 
and in like a fraction of a second, I'm at gunpoint to the back of my head. But for some reason I thought the best thing to do would be to, again, shove him away from me. But he pulled the trigger just as I did. So, I don't know if he didn't load his gun, or didn't have any ammo with him to begin with. All I could hear was two clicks, and nothing happened. I kind of avoided him again, only to get hit in the head with something and start bleeding as I've never bled before. Sure, it wasn't that big of a deal, I just had to get my head stitched and whatevs, but whenever I think that if he had actually loaded that dang gun in the first place, I would be dead, long ago. It's immensely scary to think about it. I was so close to getting murdered for something so stupid, and I lucked out and just got a fountain of blood on my head. Silver linings, you know? I was held up with a gun to my head for over an hour. It's been two years and I still freeze in fear at the thought of it. To the man who made me reevaluate life and death, frick you and thank you. You are the reason I can't sleep at night, yet you are also the reason I've decided to major in traumatology and grievance counseling. I win, mother. My best friend's older brother committed suicide on New Year's Day and tried to take me with him. I was waiting for my parents to pick me up and my friend had left with his parents to go snowboarding. I was young and naive and let him get me in a vulnerable situation by saying he wanted to take pictures for our photography class. We were in the same class and had an abstract photo project. He put duct tape on my hands and left the room saying he was going to get his camera. I felt like something was wrong luckily and started loosening the duct tape on my hands. This probably saved my life. Instead of coming back with a camera, he came back with a razor blade and a gun. He set the blade on the table and held the gun to my head and screamed over and over that he was going to freaking kill me. I remember him saying I am going to kill you do you understand I was able to free my hands and quickly grabbed the gun and turned it away from me. He still had a hold of it and we wrestled for a bit. He kept saying that he was just kidding and to give let him have the fun. We struggled more than when we had moved to the top of the stairs the gun went off. I think that gave me the adrenaline jolt I needed and I yanked the pistol from his hands and ran fell down the stairs and out the front door. I will always regret this next part and wonder what would have happened if I hadn't fell but I slipped and fell on the snowy walkway and dropped the gun. He was right behind me coming out of the front door so I just kept running down the street and hauled ass about 3-4 houses down. I looked back and didn't see him so I ran to a house, banged on the door and when someone answered I told them to call the cops in between gasps of air. I think I was hyperventilating. My best friend's brother ended up picking up the gun, going inside and shooting himself at the bottom of the stairs. I am fine and was fine afterward besides being obviously shook up and sad for my friend and his family. I was about 16 and just didn't understand why he did it. Long term it made me kinda paranoid careful around others and about trusting people I don't know. I am always very conscious and watching what people are doing when I am alone with them. Especially if I don't know them well. Not necessarily a bad thing but I learned you can't not trust anyone completely. He was a nice guy. A loner at school but nice. I had known and hung out with him and his family for about 3 years by then and never got any weird vibes from the guy. Number. I haven't gotten over it. This isn't the first life threatening situation I was in, but this is the only attempted murder, where it was premeditated. To this day I have trouble trusting people in my home, and trouble falling asleep in any setting that isn't my own bed, where I feel safe. A friend tried to kill me with a knife. We were our both experienced martial artists, and he got a knife while I was sleeping. He made a lot of noise in the kitchen and it woke me up. He came to my room and I was sitting up in my bed already, completely oblivious. He lunged at me and he nicked my chest, but eventually he lost and was in the hospital with a broken rib. He did this because I got with a girl I liked. I introduced him to her at some point, and he got upset when later on we started dating. A year later, after the longest time being brass, he tried to freaking kill me. This, along with other things, has attributed to some horrible PTSD. So, no, not over it. Over it. It happened a couple times in my teenage years, thanks to my mom's terrible taste and significant others. But I must clarify that things never got out of hand, as in, I knew something was about to happen, and figured out quickly enough that I was about to be stabbed or shot or burned alive in order to escape the situations. Had the guy actually been able to attempt those murders, well, either I would have died or the experience likely would have scarred me for life. 
Depending on what actually happened I suppose. But what has affected me more and what I remember more vividly are the endless nights that I sat at the top of the stairs with a knife in my hand. Waiting, instead of sleeping or doing my homework because of my fear that he'd be coming back. But today, I feel like that was someone else's life. When I replay it in my head, it's like a movie about some teenage girl, not me. I moved abroad, happily married an amazing dude, and my life is pretty normal. Plus, I consider myself a fairly perceptive person now and a good judge of character. I can usually figure out rather quickly whether or not someone has ill intentions. I spent most of my childhood on edge and desperately reading the body language and faces of people around me because I was constantly surrounded by volatile people. It's a shame you can't put that on a resume. I don't know if this counts as attempted murder but when I was in high school I was almost killed when a suitor of my then girlfriend plus 7 of his friends brutally clubbed and punched me to near death after our end of class party as I was walking home with two of my friends. I still feel the 7 stitches under my lips that was required to fix it. I also broke a bone near my scapula because I was hit multiple times with baseball bats. Even the doctors were surprised that I survived that incident because most of the hits were in my head and back. Thanks for the 40-ish guy that stopped them immediately when he walked past the park where I was ganged up. My two friends, being the pussies they are just watched me get beaten to almost death. I don't blame them though, considering the number of kids with those bats would probably kill us three if no one will stop them. I didn't actually know about the guy about the guy who has been hitting on my ex for about one month until after the incident but he's a freaking gang leader in our town and he's too desperate for my ex. As far as I know those 8 kids, grown up guys, are still in the juvie. How it affected me, I made it as an inspiration and source of anger to be harder to myself in terms of making myself strong and started lifting since then. I was so badly beat up that I think they triggered a switch on my brain that made me become more alert every time I am outside. Also, I dumped that B after I was released from the hospital. Turned out that she's actually the one who told the guy that he needs to get rid of his BF first before she becomes his girlfriend. Crazy B right? If it was found out that she was the one who ordered it by telling him, if I recall correctly that is actually a form of attempted murder and possibly hiring a hitman. I haven't gotten over it, and I probably never will. The memories never fade, but the burning hatred might. It has changed my life somewhat. I've grown resentful and angry, mostly because no one seems to be able to understand what I went through. But he's your brother, your family not anymore. Comments like that hurt me, deeply. People seem to think that family ties are more important than your safety, sanity and, ultimately, your life. On the bright side, it has caused me to redefine what family is, and what it should mean to me. Family isn't genetics, it's the people you care about, not the ones trying to strangle you to death. I'll dang well bury that axe when I want to, and it'll be in his head, because that's what he tried to do to me. You have been visited by the money cat like for good luck and fortune. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.